then here we go episode four of the day ticket series and uh, we've hit the ground running this time i'm fishing with my good pal james he's just had this one off the top i lost one earlier but we won't talk about that but anyway james how did you have this one well yeah off the top bit of bread he was just swimming through the swim i chucked it on his head and he snaffled it straight away Excellent. So, Spot on, mate. yeah happy days we are here at Manor Farm Fisheries this time and we're fishing Booney's Lake. And I'll tell you what, you'll see from the video, we've got another 48 hours ahead of ourselves. This place is an absolute gem. Gin clear water, full of weed, a little bit of me to be honest. And uh, I know James does very well on these lakes as well. So, you know, what a cracking start. We'll get this one slipped back. And um, yeah, I think we're gonna have a cracking couple of days by the looks of it. Yeah. So yeah, buzzing, wicked, well done mate, awesome. Cheers. We finally managed to uh, sit down after what feels like 48 hours already, but it's only been a few hours of the session. I'm in a right state. I feel like I need a shower, but uh, that's the joys of summer fishing. It's been getting on 30 degrees today. I've added to the sunburn on my legs. My miss is going to go absolutely divvy at me. But anyway, we won't get the violins out. But like I was saying earlier, we're down here at Manor Farm Fisheries uh, on Booney's Lake. It's about 16 acres, I believe. and. We got here at three o'clock, had a walk round, and uh, yeah, there's still a few people on to be fair, so we were just sort of sussing it out and seeing when people are going and, um, you know, checking the lake out. I've never fished it before, James has never fished it before, so, um, you know, it's all new to us, but it's an incredible little place, it really is, and um, yeah, I'm very much looking forward to the 48 hours ahead. We had a good walk round, got the floater kit, 
and uh, come back and had a go. And I, as I touched on earlier, you know, I lost one, which was a bit gutting because um, done all the hard work getting it out of the weed and um, the hook pulls fairly close to the bank. But anyway, we'll forget about that. James has had a great start. Um, you know it's it's all looking really good so um i've got my rods out for the night i'll put two out on a little baited area just past the weed i found two very very small little clearings it's very very thick weed out there but um, i've managed to find a couple of little clear spots two rods on that and i'll be watching the fish scooting up and down the margins all day so um i'll be stupid not to put uh, put one down the margins which is what i've done with the right hand rods so it was all a bit of a rush like i said it's uh We've been flat out floater fishing and, and chasing them around and um, getting sunburnt. But um, anyway, it's the joys of summer fishing, isn't it? So at least it isn't raining. We won't do the English thing and moan that it's too hot because um, it'll be winter again soon, won't it? But anyway, we're going to catch up with James tomorrow probably because he's still floater fishing around the corner and he's probably not going to get his rods out until uh, probably after dark. But it's definitely time to crack open a cider and uh, get a bit of food on. So we'll catch up with you a bit later. Okay, another one off the surface, last knock-ins, haven't even got a bivvy up, no rods out on the bottom, they're still having it out there now, so another bite could be on the cards before I get that all sorted, but yeah, happy with this one, nice long, lean, old one, happy days. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's about half eleven now, and um, we're all just sitting here having a couple of ciders. Just gave it a shout to go to bed because it's been a long day. And uh, the right hand rod's just whizzed off, so. Say too much, we want to get this one in and get off the mark. Um, yeah, hopefully, have a fish to say in a sec. Absolutely bang on 20 pound. Sweet. Okie dokie. Well, oh, we're we having fun. Yeah. Left. Oh, go on. Right, just about to show you oh, that 20 pound common. And the other rod that's out there on the area is just uh, gone as well. So, right. very weedy out there, so. Drop of the lead every time, hopefully. Give us a chance of getting the fish in, but slow and steady pressure. Keep going. Oh, we got off then. Nice mirror by the looks of it. Very nice mirror. Go on, Jamesy. I'll make that two a piece. Oh mate, that's lovely. That really is very lovely. What have we got? It's um, Simon Yeah! <laughs> oh, we got a little gem there, I reckon. That's another 20 pounder. Excellent! <laughs> I love carp fishing. <laughs> I do love it. Right, where were we? <laughs> <laughs> um, 20 pound common, 
long lean fighting machine. I'm sure it was a, a good 20 a few weeks ago, but they've, uh, they've spawned in recent weeks. But um, yeah, very, very encouraging signs. The fact that the other rods just whizzed off, um, as I was just about to show you this one. Um, so yeah, it's looking really good. And that one actually looks a little bit bigger and it's, uh, it's a cracking mirror by the looks of it. So uh, I'm quite keen to get this one back and um, show you what we've got in the net. So, sweet. Sweet. Yeah, sweet. sweet. <laughs> Quality. <laughs> That's a really, really unique fish, mate. Look at yeah. all this on it. That's crazy, mega. Crazy, crazy fish. Well, I don't need to say a lot, really, do I? 25-12 of incredibly scaly, perfect mirror carp. I don't think I've caught a carp like this before. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> Pretty special, mate. That's... Oh, I wish it was in the daylight, but oh well. He is fantastic. I think we should call it a fantastic mirror. Because <laughs> it really is. He's incredible. Oh, wow. It didn't fight half as hard as that uh, 20 pound common. I'm glad it didn't because I wanted to get it in, but uh, <sighs> cracking first day, James. Yeah, I'm real. Yeah. Off to a fly. <laughs> Smile on my face is it all, I think. So, uh, yeah, get a couple of stills and we'll put it back, get the rods back out. I really don't want to let it go. It's incredible. It made me very happy. Excellent. I'm really, really chuffed with that. <laughs> nice one. Yeah, spot on, mate. Morning. Morning, mate. What's happening? How's it going? Quite hot already in here, mate. <laughs> mate, you could fry an egg on my legs. <laughs> <laughs> I've got three layers of sun cream on it already. No way. Oh. They are pretty red. Anything last night? No, quite, mate. Got a couple of rods out. Yeah, you've actually got some spots rods out. And that. Yeah, did. About, about three o'clock in the morning, about I think. I got my head down. Yeah. Well, I think that's when I woke up. Well, I say I woke I was... up, I think I had about two hours sleep of broken sleep and woke up at half three. I weren't happy with them drops when I no. recast last night, so I got up at first light, which is half three, innit, and recast yeah. them. Um, probably by about four or five o'clock, they're all sheeting up all over the spot, thinking it's going to happen, oh. and it did. Middle rod's gone off and um, straightened the hook out. Oh, no about, way. Yeah, about ten yards off the bank, got it all the way in pretty much, and just got onto a big weeb and straightened the hook, so... Ah. Another loss. Good sign though. Needs yeah, to feed well, there. Wait, whatever. It's um, it's weed fishing, isn't it? So, yeah. <coughs> just a bit annoying. The hook straightened out, but there you go. Never mind. Yeah, mate. What are uh, they looking like? They're on the surface round there. I just today? literally just got. I just literally just pulled out one off the surface. Yeah. So I'm. Um, oh, yeah. Quality. Keep it brief. But what yeah. um, we're going to do today? You're going to stay around there. Um, well, I'm going to give it, give it half hour. Yeah. See if they're going to start going on the surface round here. Um, I don't think I'm going to get anything. And then the go bottom. for a move, mate. The lake's empty. There, there's there's no one yeah. here, so lovely. Well worth having a look round. Probably gets about 11, 12 o'clock here. I've already whisked the rods in. Have I? Yeah. Have a little lap round. If I don't see anything, I'll just persevere round here, and that probably in that swim to the left of me, do some float fishing for the afternoon. Yeah. Two o'clock. Like two can't bear the heat anymore, and we'll try and find some shade, isn't it? But um, mate, I'm getting there already. <laughs> you know, but you know what's coming out today? What? 
the hats coming out today. Oh, well, the hats. You... <laughs> <laughs> so watch out for it. <laughs> yeah, mate. All right, mate. Sweet. We'll catch up. We'll, we'll come round in a bit. We'll come round here. I've got some bacon on the go. I'll put some bacon on. Want some breakfast? Yeah, I'll be round. Yeah, get some. Uh, get a shout. I'll come round and have a coffee. Nice one. All right, see you in a bit. All right, all right, mate. Nice see you in a bit. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. why but every time I crack this hat on everyone laughs at me and says I look like an idiot. I mean have you seen it? Personally I think the car fishing industry is just missing a trick. I mean come on it's amazing. And your rigs on the side of it, zig rigs one turn for a foot. Well, I ain't getting sunburnt today. I reckon soda should bring them out don't you? Right, well, perseverance pays off in the end. Um, oh, oh, he's still very angry. This is actually my first, yeah, it's my first surface court carp of the year. So yeah, wicked, buzzing. Not a massive one, but oh, absolute battle royale with this thing. You've seen the footage, he just would not give up. Um, Strong line, strong hook link, you know, there's no point fishing into the weed like I'm doing now with 10 pound hooks links, you know, you're just, just suicidal, so it's 15 pound hook links and 15 pound line. And uh, here's Jamesy, got one off the top, first caught, first float of fish caught for the year, mate, so I'm well happy. Um, so yeah, it's nice and early. This hat normally brings me luck, so um, there you go, it's done it again, so yeah, wicked. Ha ha, nice.
Right then, what time is it now? God, five to one. Absolutely melting o'clock it is. <laughs> I'm done in to be perfectly honest with you. I had to come back to the bivvy after uh, spending the last sort of three hours going around the lake trying to catch one off the top. We went down the other end and uh, walked down there to start off with and there was a big group of fish, took the mixes round there, got them going, run back round, got the rod, went back round there again. And um, yeah, I'm kicking myself to be honest. I feel like I should have had one. I pulled out of a couple, a bit premature and um, didn't let the float sail away, which is what you should be doing. But uh, it's very easily done. But anyway, you know, whatever. Um, learn from your mistakes. Come back round here, then have a little go in the swim to the left of me. But it's the midday heat. I mean, it's just, they're so, so finicky on the top when it's uh, bright sunshine like this during the day. Better off just reeling everything in, regrouping and, um, you know, doing a couple of hours later on when it cools down a little bit because they're, they'll, they'll, you know, they're more catchable in the evening, especially days like this. So that's what we're doing at the moment. So I'm back in the swim, going to have a bit of lunch and it's probably just a good opportunity for me to briefly sort of say what I've done yesterday because we've not even talked about that yet. So got into the swim and, um, you know, if you walk past this swim, I'm sure a lot of people do, it's thick weed everywhere and they'll probably look past and say, oh, you know, it's unfishable it's not if it's done correctly with the right tackle and uh, you fish it right these are some of the best swims on the lakes normally because it does put people off and um, yeah so the first thing I've done was to get the leading rod out and you can see the visible weed in front of me and as it stops that's where I sort of concentrated because well not guaranteed but hoping that there was a, a, a clear spot of some sort out there and there was it took me a good hour to find it um, nice silty deep bit in between the thick weed and it just takes i can't reiterate this enough you know it's the same thing so many people tell it you get out of fishing what you put into it and um yeah it took about an hour to find the spot every cast with the rods unless i'm getting that perfect drop it's very easy to feel the weed if you're hitting the weed on the way down you sort of hit it through through the stems don't you but to get that nice drop and you know, if you get the bait application correct, nice tight spawning on a little area like that, and you're near the fish, not guaranteed, but you know, you're really increasing your chances of getting a fish during the night. You know, last night was proof of the pudding, wasn't it? So we had a couple of nice 20 pounders. Unfortunately lost that one this morning, but uh, I'm pretty confident that later on, you know, there's gonna be another bite to be had out there. So, um, but yeah, tactics wise, it's pretty much similar to Thorny, you know, helicopter setups, the only thing I've changed really is um, because of the weedy situation is a, a drop off system at the bottom and then I've just pulled the bead slightly further up the leg core just to counteract if it was to go into a little bit of weed, you know, the rig's going to slide up the leg core and also it being, it's a silty area out there so it's hard to know how deep that silt's going to be so, you know, doubly making sure that everything's going to be presented properly. Top banana pop-ups, you know me, do me very well, don't they? So. Um, the mix with the, the maize and exactly the same as Fawny, like I say, the maize, pellets, uh, tuna mino, tuna mino, tuna mino, tuna mino, an E12. And um, yeah, you know, it's it's a tactic I take everywhere and it does really well. Just adjusting the lead setups, like I said before in previous episodes to, to suit the situation. So um, like I said, I'm pretty confident that if we uh, carry on doing this this evening, should be another bite to be had on the bottom. I'm going to wait until it cools down a little bit because my legs, you do not want to see them. Please don't record it, Scott, or video it because my missus will go absolutely mad. Anyway, we won't look at them. So for the time being, we're just going to uh, chill out for a little bit and then we'll uh, catch up a bit later. 24 and a quarter. 24 and a quarter. Be nice to me. Right. So I just add this one off the top. 24 and a quarter. After sitting in this swim earlier, I'm watching Dave. I, I clocked it. They were spooking off a controller. So got rid of it. Three line dog, dog biscuit on the edge of the weed. And he snaffled it. Lovely, lovely fish. So happy with this one.
Right, come on then. Okay, so there's a couple of bait products that we do at Soda that I can highly, highly recommend to use on uh, on your mixes. So uh, just very, very quickly, Marine 17 and uh, Hot Scottish Salmon Oil, the two things that I chuck into my dry mixes at home in preparation to, uh, to take them down the lake. You know, the difference between the dry mixes and what these are, you know, it's, uh, it's polar opposites. What the salmon oil does, it flattens off all the surface of the water, which is what you want if you've got a bit of chop on the water. You chuck these things out. As, as the oil comes out of the mixes, it all flattens it off and, you know, self-explanatory. It's what you want when you float fishing. But the Marine 17 liquid, it's basically just smelly, fishy, horrible stuff. I'll read on the back because it's just basically, yeah, you need a degree to remember this. So uh, Marine 17 is a high protein, highly digestible amino acid and enzyme enriched compound made from hydrolyzed marine fish and crustaceans. So have that for a tongue twister. Um, so anyway, what I do when I get home, or when I'm at home, sorry, the dry mixes, it's just to add, you can't overdo it. You've got these big bottles. I mean, obviously they're, they're a few quid, so you use as, as little or as much as you want. If you want to really flatten off the surface of the water, put more of the salmon oil in there. That's just what I'd say. But uh, yeah, the more the merrier. I've just chucked the liquid in there now, but what I'll do is I've got some prepared. I'm just preparing these for tomorrow probably, but uh, give it a good 24 hours for all to absorb into the dry mixes. And uh, yeah, as you can see, the, the difference between the dry mixes and, and these, and you know, I'll notice the difference when the fish are feeding as well. You know, they, they once they go, once they start feeding on these, you know, they're pack manning them. So um, highly, highly recommend it. And it uh, does me very well and has done for the last couple of years. So when we arrived, the fish were all over the surface. So in my head, that was going to be my plan of attack this trip. Going to target them on the surface. Started off doing my usual thing, what I feel comfortable doing, trimming down pop-ups with a controller. No problem getting the fish taken, freebies, but getting them to take the hook bait was a struggle. I had to chop and change loads of things. I tried bread, biscuit, but I couldn't get them to take the bait confidently. So I took the controller off and obviously that I couldn't get them out as far, so I had to try and coax them in a bit. It took a lot of time to get them close enough, but when I finally did, they was more than obliging. They took it straight away, and I had two fish in quick succession, like within a couple of hours of getting here. So yeah, happy days. Um, today it's been a lot harder. Um, the, the sun's been intermittent, so it's been harder to see the fish in the water. But I have managed to catch one, a 24, which over the moon about really. It was a a lovely fish, lovely, lovely fish, and catching it uh, out of Dave's swim helped. <laughs> it helped me feel good about it anyway. But um, yeah, since then it's been very quiet. It's, a wind's got up on the lake. But I fancy it, I fancy it in here tonight. It's pushing in, pushing into me, so yeah. Happy, happy about where I am. I'm gonna stick put. I'm gonna get some bait out. We're gonna have a barbecue tonight, so I won't be putting the rods out till after that's done. Um, the morning, going to be up early, have another go on the surface before we have to pack up. But over the moon with how the trip's gone so far, yeah, happy days. <laughs> right, so another little thing that I've been messing about with recently, um, it's this little marker plum jobby. Um, I've never got on with marker floats, places that are heavily weeded, you always see them lingering about in lakes, so I've never got on with them. But this little thing is great. I've been doing a lot of zig fishing over the last year or so and this has just transformed it. The ease of being able to find out how deep it is in front of you. Just a few casts you can pretty much plumb the depth of what you've got in front of you. It's so easy to use as well. It's basically like a conventional marker. Cast it out, find your spot, release the line, pay it off, it floats to the surface and as soon as you trap the line there's tension, it grips bring it back in, you know exactly how deep it is. Proper handy little tool.
were just looking out the spot, James just cooked us a lovely barbecue. And uh, oh, I was just gonna have a little go in the left hand swim on the top. <laughs> the left hand rod's absolutely melted off. We thought there were tents rolling over the spot, didn't we? There's definitely a carp amongst them. Feels reasonable, this. Boys, <laughs> nice. <laughs> yes, brother. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's the best one yet. So yeah, we were just finishing the barbecue up, and um, me and James were looking out, and I said to him, I said, I don't think it might not even happen tonight. A lot of the fish seem to have done the off, or they've just gone down in the water. I say it's got a lot cooler this afternoon, and it seems like uh, it's the latter that they're still out there, but they just duck down into the water layers a little bit and um, yeah the last half hour we're seeing signs of I definitely saw one carp show over the spot and then there was quite a few tench and um, anyway stop blabbering on we've got the biggest fish of the session so oh he's a wee -ah. 27 and a half pound mirror we'll take him for uh, the second evening like I said I really didn't think much was going to happen this evening um, just making a plan already in the morning if nothing was going to happen then we were going to go up to the other end because I think that's where a lot of them are gone but there seems to be a few still down here so either way that's fish number seven between us isn't it James yeah. so I think in anyone's books that's uh, that's not a bad result at all oh. I don't know what strain the fish are in here but the colours of them remind me of them the Suttons at Papercore like ready tinge to them Anyway, very, very happy with him. <laughs> and it's made me forget about my sunburn. <laughs> Wicked. First one off the bottom for me this morning on a quench on my Ronnie. It does it everywhere I take it. Casting over to all them reeds behind me. Yeah, first light this morning, ripped off, but absolute one toner. Thought it was a bigger fish when I was playing it. I popped this little double, but he's cool. I'm happy. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, a quiet night after that 27 pounder, to be honest, but. Um, I've got one to show you, just add this one. Jet black Boonies Lake Common Carp. Oh, he's all right, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, that'll do. Very happy. Last day today. Um, James has gone down the other end, see if there's any stalking opportunities up there. But um, it's a much, much cooler day today, so, and I'm still seeing signs of activity over the baiting spot. So unless James rings me and says uh, he's having it off down there, to be honest, I'm probably gonna stick around here and uh, persevere on the baited spot. Cause I think there might be another, bait, another bite to be had off the bottom, to be honest. So um, that's the plan for today. Even if we don't have anything else, it's been a, an amazing session, full of action. And um, yeah, but we'll see what today brings, eh? But for now, That'll do very nicely.
Thanks, mate. I make that number 10. <laughs> Come on. Yes. Oh, God. That's a nice common, man. Oh, it's chunky. Hey, he's a real, he's bigger than I thought. It's my second fish of the morning, 23 and a quarter on three line dog biscuit. Happy with this one. She's lovely, isn't she, Dave? Mate, it's mega carp. Absolutely immaculate. Yeah, he's brilliant. Um, this will probably be the last fish of the session, to be honest with you, because we're going to be going home in a couple of hours. But um, yeah, I'm a bit taken back. It's been, it's been awesome, isn't it? Oh, it's been a cracking I've lost trip. Every single minute of it. Um, 10 fish between us. We've had a few losses to hook pulls, inevitable barbless hooks, and the weedy situation that we got out there. But I think we've done very well, and I'm, I'm very, very pleased. So um, just want to say a massive thank you to Manor Farm Fisheries. All, you, all of the staff have been so accommodating. As soon as you get through the gate, you feel like you're being welcomed into their home and it, it, it's a really really fantastic venue and i will certainly be coming back for more i don't know about you james mate, i'll be coming back mate. you'll definitely be coming back bring <laughs> yeah. a few of the boys down here um just want to say a massive thank you to every single one of you been putting the positive comments on the youtube channel you know really spies us on to carry on doing what we're doing big thank you to you james for joining me on this session and um we shall see you in the next episode Well then, one for the road it seems. We're over there putting James's fish back, come back to my swim, just getting my bits and pieces to get packed up to be honest, put a spawn of mixers out to the weed where they've been scooting around all morning. And um, I'm a bit taken back to be perfectly honest with you. We've got the first 30 pound of the series. 30 pound, 12. 30 pound 12, absolutely beasted me. Surface caught 30 pounders don't come round often, mate. Wow, I am buzzing, proper buzzing. Oh, mate, yes, yes, get in there. <laughs> oh, come on, James, get well in, done, mate. mate. Look get at that. in there. One for the road. Come on, mate, well done. And what a one for the road it is. Oi! Oh, made up, absolutely made up. And this will be the last fish of the episode, I promise you. Thank you so much for watching.